This video is going to be an educational video under Motor Basics, RC Motor Basics. We're going to be taking a look at some of the key differences between a brushless inrunner motor and a brushless outrunner motor. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the differences and talk about the differences about the inrunner versus the outrunner. I'll grab the outrunner to start. So what I've done is I've placed a propeller, a rather large propeller, on this rather large outrunner. And I, I did this on purpose to show the differences between the two motors. So if I were to rotate this propeller, I'm rotating the shaft of the motor. On one side, the propeller is connected to the actual case of the motor. And on the other side, you have the mount of the motor and you also have an output shaft here as well. The output shaft is actually connected straight through the core of the motor. And then the case is actually attached at this side of the, of the motor shaft. So all of that acts as one unit. And of course, as I rotate the propeller, you can see physically that the case itself is rotating as I'm holding this base of the motor. So this is the key difference between the motors. So if I grab the inrunner, I don't have any sort of propeller on it, but there's nothing that moves on the outside. So if I hold the motor, simply I'm rotating um, the motor shaft and inside that motor shaft is moving. So now some of the differences and why this is true, when I'm rotating either the shaft on the inrunner or the shaft on the outrunner, what's happening is I'm actually moving the permanent magnets. I'm moving the permanent magnets around the windings, especially on this outrunner. So the magnets are on the outside and I'm moving the magnets past the windings, which are on the inside. The windings are also referred to as your armature. It's of course what is connected to the leads uh, that you see on the outside of the motor. We connect this to the speed control. For the case of the inrunner, the windings are actually on the outside. So on the case, it's on the, of course on the inside of the case, but it is on the outside of the motor where the inside core is the permanent magnets attached to this rotating shaft that you can't see unless you can look inside the motor. So that is the main differences between the two motors. Now, for comparison's sake, what I've done is I've selected a couple motors that are roughly the same in terms of performance. So this outrunner motor can deliver about 1500-ish watts and this inrunner also can deliver about 1500-ish watts. Now the key physical differences between these two is that the inrunner is longer in length, you can see right there, and the outrunner is larger in diameter. So that's actually quite important and makes up for some of the performance differences that we'll actually get into. So if we look at some of the performance differences between your typical outrunner and your typical inrunner, uh, one of the biggest things that you will find, and all these comparisons are gonna be assuming a similar size and weight or even power of the motors in order to have a fair comparison. Um, it is possible to debate one area uh, differently, but we're going to look at the general terms and how these are typically sold in the RC market. So if we look at the KVs of these two motors, the inrunner actually has a higher KV, so that really is our RPM per volt, and the brushless outrunner has a lower KV. Now this is important because every time that we're selecting a motor for an application, KV is probably the first thing that everyone's interested in. It's important that we get these, the KV value correct for the application. Otherwise we can end up burning out some of our electrical components, whether it's the battery, the speed control, or the motor itself. Um, so it's really important to make sure that we're selecting the proper KV. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to the applications part. So one of the reasons why the KV is lower on the, on the outrunner is because we have the bigger diameter, the physical size, it's larger in diameter. That larger physical size allows us to place a greater torque on the actual motor shaft. The best way for me to explain it is by taking a tape measure and saying, if I measure out, let's say two feet, 600-ish millimeters, and I apply a force here, let's say it's one unit. One unit of force at this distance creates a massive torque here in my left hand, so on your right. Now, if I were to take that distance and half it, so it's only one foot or about 300 millimeters, one unit of force is going to only apply half the torque because we have half the distance. Um, your torque value is always a multiple between your force and your distance. 
So that's why the Outrunner generally is able to have a lower KV, but then that lower KV is also translating into a higher torque value. So consequently, that also means that your inrunner has the higher KV that we talked about, but also the lower torque output. So that's important to note as well when selecting, the diff when selecting a motor for your specific application. So one of the things that I also want to get into in this video is the efficiency differences. Now, much like what we talk talked about before is uh, the efficiency can be debated just like all the other parameters that we are talking about. But for the sake of this video, I do want to talk about the efficiency differences between the motors. Now, um, it is possible to debate one is better than the other. You can do it for either or. But for the sake of this video, we're going to use the general um, outrunner, the typical outrunner that you see versus the typical inrunner. Generally speaking, efficiency is better within the inrunner motor. There's a couple reasons why that is, and I want to talk about um, the one of them. Uh, the main reason that I see is the cooling aspect of the motor differences. So if you look at the Outrunner, the Outrunner has these massive holes or vents in the front of the motor and also in the rear of the motor. Oftentimes the mounting plate is cut in such a way in order to allow that flow of air through the motor. It's really the only source of cooling that these Outrunner motors have. Remember, the windings are at the core of this motor. So they're at the center. You gotta get that heat from the center out the only way to physically get that heat out is by transferring it through the shaft and then coming out to the end of this motor in this area and then from there trying to spread it out through that end bell right here. So this end bell on the end here, it fi it's fixed. The case rotates but this end bell is fixed. That's the only area that you can actually expel heat from this. Remember this rotating mass that I'm holding here contains the permanent magnets. Those don't get hot. They are only heated up by the windings. They do not get hot by source of heat. Um, now when you look at the inrunner, on the inrunner your windings are on the other side of this case. They are physically touching this outer case. So your cooling on the inrunner is really a matter of just cooling this outer case where the outrunner depends on air getting through through those windings through these vents through the motor and then escaping out the back carrying that heat away so this is really important when you look at let's say the brushless um, radio controlled boat so when you look at the radio controlled boat boats have the advantage of being able to use the cooling water that's found in the pond or lake that they're driving the boat in and that cooling water can be used in uh, the in-runner motor to cool it as well as the speed control and anything else that needs to be cooled. However, when you're cooling the in-runner, you can actually have the water directly contact the surface of this can. You can extract all that heat away from the motor to get rid of it, all that waste heat. Um, on the outrunner, when you go and try and put this into a boat, th there are outrunners placed into boats and if you try and put the outrunner onto a boat, what you'll find is that your typical motor mount will have a cooling jacket right up on the face. Now on the face, this is all the contact surface that you have. So you can only take heat away from this surface area rather than the whole entire case on the inrunner. So that's a big, big uh, difference between them. If I run this air-cooled and I run this motor air-cooled, so both outrunner and inrunner is air-cooled, I can extract the same amount of power. But as soon as I want to push these motors and I go to um, a different form of cooling, let's say even water cooling, just to kind of bring it to that um, further scope, the water cooling will then blow the outrunner away in terms of how much power I can then extrapolate from the inrunner motor uh, just because I'm able to take that heat right away away from the motor. Um, so I think that's like one of the biggest reasons why we're able to get these brushless inrunners um, more efficient than the outrunners. Now, like I said, you can get an outrunner to be operating more efficient than the inrunner, but for the sake of this video, we're talking in quite general terms. Um, so let's talk about some of the application differences, because this is really where it's important. Um, to select the correct application, it really depends on some of the parameters that we've already spoken about. So if you look, uh, we're going to go through them all, um, or most of them at least. If you look right starting with airplanes, if you take your typical trainer style airplane, it's an airplane that generally flies quite slowly, 
you will definitely want some sort of outrunner propelling it. And the reason is you want to be able to spin a relatively large propeller and you want to spin it relatively slowly. You want a lot of thrust and you don't need speed. That's one of the reasons why an outrunner works very well in that application. So you can use that torque to your advantage, slow spinning um, speeds because of that lower KV on the outrunner to produce the results that you need. Now if you look at an EDF, an electric ducted fan jet, you have a quickly spinning rotor or motor inside on a fan. So there it would really be best suited to inrunners. Now you do in the electric ducted fan jet scene, you do see some outrunners and inrunners, uh, but it is more suited to the inrunner type motors. And oftentimes uh, the electric ducted fan companies promote that they have an inrunner motor inside. They love to put this on the box and we'll see a video um, soon about that. Um, if we look at a different application, one of the applications that we can look at is the radio control of a car, um, as well as the monster truck, stadium truck, short course truck. All of those, generally speaking, use inrunner motors. Um, there's a good reason why. Uh, cars in those land vehicles have the room to place a transmission within them, and that transmission can be used to multiply the torque. So if you have a fast spinning motor, you can use a transmission to reduce the amount of speed that that motor is spinning at in order to get the correct amount of speed at the wheels. Because of the advantage of the transmission and the room that they have for it and it's not a weight issue, uh, inrunners are used quite frequently on those applications. Now if we look at the radio controlled helicopter, that's an area where you typically see outrunners being used. Um, you may see some inrunners, but for the most part outrunners are dominating that um, that industry. I do see in the drone industry outrunners only. I don't think I've ever seen an inrunner in being used and again it's because of the differences in application. Low KV is perfectly suited to a drone because you can spin those larger propellers at slower speeds to get the thrust in order to lift good amounts of load. Um, and then when you get into the radio controlled boat scene you see Again, you see inrunners being used more frequently, and that's because of the nature of higher speeds. You're typically operating radio controlled boats between 20 and 30,000 RPM, even beyond that, upwards of even 50, 60,000 RPM in some um, cases as well. Um, you also have the big advantage of cooling there, too, so you can directly cool your inrunner motor to pull even more power out of it um, efficiently and effectively. So those are some of the applications between the outrunner and inrunner. Um, when you're selecting the motor for your particular application, you do want to take a look at what motor best suits your application. Like I said before, you can choose in some cases both an inrunner and an outrunner. Both would apply, both would work, and both probably would work very well. Um, there's some cases where one may work better than the other, and these are the cases where you really need to look at what is best suited for your application. So if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then I'll see you in the next video.